Okay. J-hooks. We use these a lot. We use circle hooks and J-hooks. I don't know which one works better. So we use a little bit of both. Okay. I was always been always been a fan of the J-hook, but uh, since I started using the circle hooks, they seem to hook the fish right inside my mouth, so we can't complain. Alright, now if, here's a here's a problem you may run into. Your swivel is just a little bit longer, so it's a little loose up here. You can always throw it right through that eye hole on your wire too, okay? So you have a little bit of leeway there with your swivel and your wire, okay? Now I'll grab another piece of bait. Like to hand pick our bunker so they fit in the tubes. You can buy a big bunker, but then you gotta cut it up. These babies are nice, they fit right in there. Especially if you're fishing for stripers, you know, you like to use bunker heads and stuff. Now you're getting a whole bunker inside the tube, you can't beat it. Double hook. Always make sure you got enough of a hook sticking out too. You want to make sure he gets hooked when he hits it. Little loop. Squeeze it together. Jam it in there. Every once in a while, you hook your finger, but don't worry about it. <laughs> you get over it. Okay. And then another bait. Just keep repeating the process. Once you got your rigs made, it's real simple. You just keep using these rigs over and over again. Move the eye. Oh, want to go back in the ocean, that's okay. Mm -hmm. the tail. Just a great solid rig. I mean, can't be. You can uh, even throw a rubber band around. Sometimes we throw a rubber band around just to keep that wire in there nice and tight, but you don't need to do that. Um, what, if it's real rough conditions in the ocean and it's ripping your bait off, you might want to do that. Okay, put that down. Now you got five done. You only need one more. That will be this baby. It's a little bit bigger circle hook, a little stiffer. If you're going for sharks, you don't want to lose a big shark because you don't got the right size hook. Done it many times. We're going with heavier tackle now because we don't want to lose 200 pound sharks. It's not fun. Okay. These are nice, nice bunker. Go through the eyelet. So, get a little tuck, slide it down to you. Okay, now you got your six baits inside your tubes. What you're going to do then, you're going to remix this real quick. You don't want it too thick, okay? You want to leave it nice and runny so it works its way down around, around the bait, okay? If you make it too thick, you might tend to get voids in there where it doesn't creep down around the sides of the bait, okay? I lost the lid, it went inside, no big deal. We're going to pour this liquid inside these tubes. Now what you want to make sure is that you fill it an inch from the top. You don't want to go all the way up to the top because ice expands and that's going to go over the edge of the bullet mode, okay? And if that happens, you're not going to be able to slide it down that tube when you pull it out. You'll have to chip the ice away. Just a waste of time, so keep the, the level of your liquid, whether it be chum or water, inside that mold an inch below the surface. That's key. Alright, we're going to dump that in there. Like I said, the pan comes in handy because you wind up spilling a little bit. It's a little older blender, but I didn't want to use my mom's blender. You know, we got to use what we had. Okay. Your swivel, if your swivel drops down in there, it'll happen once in a while. You just want to make sure you put it back in there. Keep that swivel up. Filling. That's an inch from the top. Now, need a little more liquid. I'm not going to make it to the end, so you just add a little more water. You don't necessarily need to add more chum, okay? Just add a little bit more water, you'll be fine. Like I said, you want to make that too thick, you just want to make a nice slick when you're going out there. 
Then we gotta get, ooh, we gotta go down inside and get the lid. That's nice. I don't know. I like the smell of Manhattan. <laughs> what are you making a Manhattan sandwich? Okay. Now, yeah. got three more to go. Fill that up. Wow, it's like a nice chum slick bullet. With your bait and your weight, everything inside it, you need to catch a fish. Okay, after you've done that, you're going to grab your six pack. It's got three holes in it. Okay, you're going to put your fingers in there, just like you're picking up a six pack. It's just like a six shooter clip. You pick this baby up and you're going to want to put it in your freezer. Alright, now that you have your bait in the freezer, I'm going to show you how to load your cast it. Okay, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make a shock leader. Now this shock leader is going to take the shock that comes out of the barrel when you fire your caster. Alright, you're going to use the same line, stainless steel line, but we're going to, you're going to want to use 90. You do not want to go over 90 pounds because the thickness of the wire and the ice going down the tube will not allow the bullet to go down to the end. Okay, so stay around 90 pounds. Um, I'm going to use the 135 just to show you how to build the leader right now. All right. What you first want to do is take a swivel and connect it to your line all right, on your fishing pole. Heavy duty swivel, make sure you make a nice knot because this is your connection to your fish. You don't want it to break there. All right. You're going to take your 135 pound leader with your crimp, slide it through the crimp, slide it through the swivel like we did when we were making the bait, pull that back, make a nice little loop, get your crimping pliers, find the right slot, crimp down, crimp down, until you get to the end, check it out, make sure it's nice, nice and tight, okay, now you want to pull enough wire out, because this is going to take the shock of the barrel, what I like to do is just to reel up some slack, Okay, keep your swivel about a foot away from your barrel. You're going to slide this wire down the length of your tube, making sure it's the same length as your tube. Now, you can go a little bit longer, pace will go a little bit longer, you don't want to be short so that swivel goes inside the barrel. Okay, so I cut it right here, right about the ball valve, and uh, just get your cutters, cut it. Get another double ended crimp, put that on there. Slide your swivel onto that again, slide it back through. Same procedure, tighten the loop up a little bit. Okay, crimp it down. Always make sure your crimps are nice and tight because, like I said before, you don't want to lose a big fish because of tackle failure. Okay, now you have your split rings, which I didn't mention before, but you're going to need split rings, which you're going to use these split ring pliers to put on. It's got a little tooth on there, you slide that right between the split ring. Okay, it opens it up so you can slide it over this swivel. What this does is allow, this is going to allow you to clip onto your bait mold. Okay, which has a swivel sticking out like this. Alright, you just pull your pin it, you pull your nail out and your swivel is ready to go. When you're done with your six pack, after you pull it out of the freezer, they're going to look like this. They're going to be frozen, about a half inch, three quarters of an inch from the top because you kept it down about an inch from the top and it expanded. Okay, so your baits are ready to go. All you're going to do when you go fishing is pull these out like this and stack them in your cooler like logs. You want to stack them on top of each other, put a rag on top and shut your cooler. Keep that cold air down. That keeps your bullets nice and hard. The harder your bullets are, the further they're going to fly. When they start getting soft, they'll tend to blow up a little bit. You lose a lot of distance. It's not going to put you anywhere under 180 yards, 200 yards, but it'll start to affect your cast. Okay? If you want to go 300 yards, 250 yards consistently, make sure your bullets are hard. Okay? All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip onto this. We don't have any bait inside this mold. I just want to show you how, what it's going to look like when you pull it out. It's a little melted, it's a little hot in here, but uh, we're going to give it a shot. We'll clip onto that, slide that sp 
foot ring around there and pull that out. That shows you what your bullet's going to look like. Okay, you got your weight forward, you got your hook, everything inside there. Now what you're going to do is, when you're ready to cast, you're going to take this and you're going to tuck all your hardware down behind the ice mold, okay? And let that sucker slide down. See, it's going to slide down real slick, okay? Well, it should. I got a little hung up there. I was swivel. But, okay. There you go. Eh, sometimes you got to juke it a little bit. Okay, when it's seated at the bottom, you're ready to go. What you're going to do is open your bail. This is going to be pre-charged because you're going to charge this before you're ready to cast. Okay, you want to kick, you want to charge this anywhere from 50 to 90 pounds. If you want to go 300 yards, charge that sucker up to 90 pounds. Okay, once your bait's in there, make sure you have no knots, no tangles, and up on your swivel, around your eyelets or anything. You're going to take your line, open your bail, and tuck it in the line stay. This is going to allow you to step back and be away from the caster without having to hold on to the line. Okay. After that's done, you make sure no one's in front of you. Look all around. Make sure there's no boats out in front of you. You do not want to fire this thing at anybody. I mean, it's got very heavy weight on there. It's going at a high velocity. Okay? So, you uh, always want to make sure your surroundings and you never want to have anybody in front of you. We, always, we try to make it as safe as we can. We put the caution stickers on. We've got a great safety system on there. So, you know, shorty, you want to point it at somebody, which is really stupid. Okay, we don't recommend that. It's things used for fishing, okay? I'm going to show you what you do next. You drop back here, you, you can adjust your trajectory with this back leg back here, up and down. If you got a big headwind, you might want to jack the back of your caster up so you cut through the air more. The, if there's a, a, a heavy ocean breeze coming in on you and you got this caster all the way down, you're going to tend to drag a lot of line off your reel, but it's going to get ripped to the side because of the air. So you want to cut through that air. When you're ready to cast, you have this tucked inside the line stay. You're going to pull your safety mechanism out and throw this lever as fast as you can. The faster you throw it, the further the bait's going to go. Okay? All right. After that's done, this is going to pull. When you fire, it's going to pull out of there, and your bait's going to fly out 250 to 300 yards. After your line's done, you just clip your bail, reel up your slack. As fast as you can, you want to reel your slack up fast, okay? You don't want to leave it laying out there in the ocean because it's going to tend to drag in the current. So reel it up real fast, get that line tight between you and your weight and your, and your sinker, I mean your, your bait. You pick this up, take it out of the rod, take it out of the rod holder on the caster, put it in a rod holder on the beach. You're ready for your next cast. Put your next rod back in there, charge that tank back up, pull your bait out, clip it on. Within a matter of 10 minutes, you can have three baits and an average from 250 to 300 yards offshore with this system. It's perfect. Okay? So now you know how your far out fishing bait casting system works. Let's go fishing.